Okay, welcome to today's video everyone. So in this video we'll be looking at this limit. The limit as x approaches infinity of the square root of x squared plus 3x minus the square root of x squared minus 3x. Now, this type of limit here involves some square root signs, some radicals. So, a trick that's often used to solve these types of limits where they involve radicals is to multiply by the conjugate of these radicals. So, what do I mean by that? Well, just like when you're rationalizing a third, or if you're realizing a complex fraction, we multiply the original function, so we multiply this function here, by the conjugate, which is just changing the sign in the middle. So, we're going to be multiplying by x squared plus 3x, and now we're going to have a minus here, so this becomes a plus, of x squared minus 3x. And of course, since we can't multiply by something, we're going to have to divide by the same thing. Okay, so what we've done, we've just multiplied by 1, which is perfectly okay. Okay, now, the reason we do this is because here we have a term that follows this sort of pattern. We have a minus b multiplied by a plus b. And this simplifies when we multiply the 2 we know that this simplifies to a squared minus b squared. And why is this helpful? Because when we get the a squared term, this is going to eliminate this radical here. And when we get the b squared term, it's going to eliminate this radical here. So, we're going to have a squared, which is going to be x squared plus 3x. So it's the square root and then squaring it, which is just going to be x squared plus 3x minus b squared, which is this radical squared, so it's just going to be the inside. And then we divide by these two radicals. Okay, now, even though we still have some radicals on the bottom, we can deal with these later on. Let's go ahead and simplify what we have in the numerator. So we have this limit, we're going to have x squared minus x squared, which will be 0, and we're going to have 3x minus minus 3x, so it's going to be plus, and we're going to get 6x divided by the square root of x squared plus 3x plus the square root of x squared minus 3x. Okay, now... What else can we do? Well, when we have limits as x approaches infinity, usually, but not always, but usually, we try to get our fractions because we can apply this rule here of 1 over x is equal to 0. Because even though we can't substitute infinity in, we can think of it as 1 over an extremely large number, an arbitrarily large number, that's going to be equal to 0. So let's divide the numerator and the denominator by x. So if we do that, here we're going to have 6x divided by x, which will be just 6. And on the bottom, this is what we're going to have. All divided by x. Now, of course, on the bottom, we can split this into two fractions. So it's going to be x squared plus 3x over x plus the square root of x squared minus 3x over x. And now we can bring this x inside 
the square root and make it an x squared. So it's going to be the limit as x approaches infinity of 6 all over the square root of x squared plus 3x over x squared plus the square root of x squared minus 3x over x squared again. Okay, now we can do a little bit more simplification. We've still got the 6 on top. Now we're going to have x squared divided by x squared will be 1. And here we have 3x over x squared is going to be 3 over x plus x squared over x squared is 1 minus 3 over x. And now we can substitute, but not really, but we can think of substituting in our value as x approaches infinity. So this is going to be 6 over the square root of 1 plus 3 over a very large number. Well, that's going to be equal to 0. And here we're going to have the same thing. 1 minus 3 over a very large number. That's 0. And so we have 6 divided by... Well, this here is going to be square root of 1, which is 1. Same thing here, square root of 1, which is 1. So we have 6 divided by 2, which is equal to 3. Okay, so you can see there's quite a bit of algebraic manipulation required to solve these types of limits here. But the main trick to realize is that when we have a sum or difference of two square roots or radicals, we multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of this expression here in order to eliminate the radicals on top. And when we do that, we can simplify down and we can use this fact, our, our normal ways of computing our limits. Okay, so once again, this was a sum or slash difference of two radicals type of limit question. Okay, thanks for watching.